Welcome back, anglers. I'm the Survival Viss, and we are turned called Wild the Angler. We're going to try to heavily make up for last episode. We tried going after the cutthroat at the map specific location it asked us to catch them at. We had no fish of any kind even show interest in, like, the baits and that I used. I even checked to see if maybe I was going too large or too small for the hook size. The cutthroat trout can be caught at gold rank of hook size 4 and 3, and silver rank of hook size 5. So, I expected at least something to have been interested in the bait there. But, we're going to see if maybe the spinner setup will give us a little bit better odds of getting what we're after. And hopefully, if that is the case, then we can quickly change up and go for... Uh, the other couple fish that are further up north, too. But, yeah, I do a Paul. See, I kind of wish I could also fast travel to where I have the vehicle left out on the map. Just so that way, if I do have to, say, like, change out my equipment like I did for the Cutthroat Trout, I could just fast travel back to where I was and immediately try again and see if I've figured out what the right combination I need is for them. Again, it's just, like, more quality of life stuff and little ideas and such that I keep thinking for what could be done to improve the angler. But it won't be too long to get back up there. Since we are basically retreading old ground from last episode, this will just be, like, blink of the eye, and we should be right up to that footpath once again. It might take a little longer or when we have to go after the, uh... the other couple of fish species we've got the challenges for, but with them just being further north up the road, I don't think it'll take all that much time. Yeah, so here we are. We're already back to where we want it to be. And let me just run us up this little incline and get to this... The water body. I'm also going to try again to not be right at the shore as I'm casting for trying to get the cu get the cutthroat. Cutthroat. Nah, I'm messing up all my words. Just to see if that easily spook trait could be something that is causing a little bit of issue for what we're trying to bring in. So yeah, I think right here is good. I've got that already set up with a spoon. And we'll just try some constant retrieval and see what goes, if anything happens to it. I don't know if it would be better to cast it out, let the spoon, like, sink down to the bottom of water and then reel in, or I should try keeping it at the surface as I'm just retrieving. Oh. Okay, there's something at least. Oh, and got a good size on it. Oh. Okay. Now, I'm kind of surprised that it looked like the fish was still able to be swimming on land there. So I'm wondering if the angler, if they never took into consideration that you might be casting from not at the very edge of the water. But we'll try that again and see. It is a good sign that we had something already interested in it. So it might have been that, again, as much as there's a wide variety of baits listed in the handbook for species, only focus on the three that it gives you from, like, hovering over the full, hovering over that specific fish in the full, like, gallery of them. <laughs> but we'll try and see about getting another one interested if we can. And maybe we'll try going over that way with it. You know what? I'm also going to let it sink to the bottom before I do start retrieval. See if that does change up a little bit for if we can get anything after it.
Yeah, it doesn't really take too long before the lure is already making its way up to the surface with constant retrieval. It doesn't seem like anything's interested this go. Yeah, once it gets to like uh, seven meters or so, I basically think that's the case of the lure is hitting land. There's no real point in going slow with retrieval once it's hit that sh hit land. Okay, let's bring it in. And keep our eyes open, see if anything does show interest. There we go. Yeah, got some good weight to this one as well. I want to see what happens once it does hit shore. Yeah, like, it looks like it's still swimming on land. Okay, but that was only a silver. That's interesting. Because that is, what, a hook size 5? Okay, so we did confirm that we can catch those with that. So now, we should be after gold size with this. We'll reduce the retrieval speed, let it sink to the bottom, and then start and do another constant retrieval. But it does seem like the game assumes you are always going to be as, as close to the water's edge as you might be. Once the fish hit land, they still look like they are swimming on land. It's not like they have this... A uh, certain point they'll hit and then they'll kind of like lay flat on their side and flop on you. Which does look kind of weird, to be honest. But we'll see if we can get a gold rank cutthroat interested. Bring that in and be able to show it off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just on land now, so we'll bring it in the rest of the way. Eh, maybe I'll even reduce the retrieval speed further. See if we can elicit a bite or a strike. Doesn't seem like we'll get anything this go. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. You just by changing the pressure I do put on the trigger for retrieving it. I can actually speed up and decrease my real speed. Okay, I had no idea that was even a thing you could do. Like, on the bottom left-hand side, you do see that it has, like, the pre-built retrieval speeds there. Like, pre-built or, like, preset. But if I want to do very faint, you can see I just barely am starting to retrieve it. Or I could press full, and then that's, like, the max speed. Oh, that's kind of interesting to know. Now, truth be told, I don't think I'll let the lure or that sink all the way into the water. Seems like it might just be easier to try cast after cast than give it the little weight to sink fully. Yeah, 
Yeah, but it looks like no interest again. Truth be told, I can't even see where the spoon is that's coming in. Okay, I'm gonna walk a little bit closer to the shore. But it still does feel like the game has that too formulaic approach to it, where... As soon as you get to a hook size too big, all activity ceases. It is by the numbers. Incredibly so at points. I'll try one more cast after this. If we don't have anything going after the spoon, then I'll try the spinner. And see if that is any better luck. Yeah, maybe I'll try casting over there. That's a direction I haven't really tried yet. <laughs> Nothing there. Okay, let me try the spinners we got. So we'll go for a hook size four. And I'll just maybe I'll even try default retrieval speed. Maybe that also plays factor. But yeah, I don't know what else I could be doing different. I just feels like it's just not getting the luck we need for whatever the specific combination is here. That's okay. I'm going to reduce that down to two, and let me try. Try that and see. Okay, there we go. This. Okay, we gotta be careful with it. Yeah, once it seems to tire out, that's when we'll start bringing the line in. It is able to take some out, but it's with a lot of friction, so that should hopefully wear it out. Make it a little easier on us to be able to bring in once it does tuck, once it hits like it's tired spate. Now I'm trying to speak, I swear, it's just trying to be careful now that we finally got some interest from, I think it's a cutthroat? It does seem to have, like, that bright red streak along its side. But we gotta be careful, because they are a fighter, so towards the end, as we're getting it close, we can't be too greedy. There we go. And there we go, our gold cutthroat. Took a little while to be able to finally get its interest, but it's nice to say that we've gotten that completed. Ooh, and we're actually getting nice payouts for that too. So each gold rank mission might be giving us 200 credits to work with. Definitely helpful after having to spend the credits I did for the uh, 
spin casting lures. But let's see about picking out the next uh, fishing challenge. I think it was the second one for Emerald Plateau is the one that's closer. Yeah, looks like it. Okay, so we need a gold rank kokanee salmon. I think a hook size of four will do for them. I'm not 100% sure, but we should be able to get up there and give it a few tries before the episode might end. But let's go for a little bit more of a drive and try to get up there. As soon as we can hit the downhill portion, the drive will go much faster. There we go. Yeah, I do need to be careful because... Coming down here the other time, I think it was into, yeah, the boulder field to our right is... Oh, <clears throat> where I got the vehicle stuck and lodged onto one specific rock. So I want to try to avoid having that happen this go. I think we're past that point. So, ooh. Seemed like the vehicle wanted to tip front over. Okay. Yeah, it won't be long now. As long as we don't go in the drink with the vehicle. Pop over that rock. And... Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, says it's straight ahead. <clears throat> oh, looks like we have a little fast travel point here. Yeah, nice to find. I still actually have apparently seven in the area to find. Oh, no, we still got to go for quite a ways to go still. My bad. <clears throat> so let's keep going up there and see. I got excited finding structures and such, but... Oh, looks like that's... Probably have to take that bridge. Yeah, take that bridge and then just follow the main road as it keeps going straight. Over there. Uh, but, yeah, straight on. Oh, I also see another tree to report. So this old uh, slow to get us around. Actually. Hang on, isn't this the place where, before the console release, I think we've been at this exact spot. Yeah, we have. When you used to have the tutorial to go after the Kokanee Salmon, it would send you to this area here to try fishing for them. Oh, that's kind of neat that they repurposed it for the, trying to flow for the gold now. Okay, but here we are, and let me check that handbook and see what the Kokanee like. Oh, we can actually just use the same setup we had. They like the spinner and the spoon. We'll just have to hope the hook size of four is big enough for them. So yeah, we'll try a little bit here, and then in order to go for uh, the other challenge... We just gotta go up the... well, it's supposed to be a footpath, but we'll see if we can fudge that and get the vehicle to take us up there. I mean, I came through this way with the vehicle way back before, so I have to imagine we can try to cheese it and do it again. Eh, something jumping, but not a kokanee. Hmm. 
Okay. Now, ah, well, I think we'll try it for Spinner for the rest of the episode, see if we can get what we're after. If we do have it so, like, there's no interest from anything, we'll try switching out for the spoon, see if that switch brings any better luck. And unfortunately, and if it doesn't, then it might mean the crankbait is what we needed here, and that's the one I did not pick up. Well, I wonder what that fish is, just to the left there. But the kokanee salmon having the, like, uh, really bright red to... Ooh. Okay. Uh, that... Okay, that's a kokanee right there. Yeah, the bright red does still stand out. Let's see if we can keep that around here. Maybe we can get its interest in the uh, lures we're bringing it in close. Yeah, just let me grab a net and just whoop, scoop it up and we got it. Oh, no, okay, those are both kokanee right there. It's just neither one is interested in going for the lure. Actually, none of the three seem to be interested in the lure. Hmm. Just my luck, I can see three of the species we're after, and not a single one gives a crap about our line. After this cast, we'll switch out for the spoon and see. It might be the kokanee do need a hook size of 3 for it, and I'm just a bit below that threshold. But, well, hope anyway, just in case, you never know. Even if I could catch a silver one, at least that gives me the confirmation of, okay, I unfortunately do not have what we need, but we do have a fast travel point right behind us that'll make it easier to go for this. Yeah, no interest. Okay, let's change that out for the size 4 spoon. And we'll see if maybe default retrieval speed gets more interest. I see the fish right there. I'm not sure if we have a buddy with us or it's mocking us. See, it's that fish right in front of us. I think that's a rainbow trout. Kind of hard to tell, though, with the reflection or the little bit of light cascading on the water. Ah, not really a care there. Like, what bugs me a bit is, if this is supposed to work for the species, even if this isn't going to get us a gold one, you'd imagine we would still be able to catch, like, bronze or silver ranks with it, but, like, there's no interest from the species. I should say all fish species whatsoever here. So it's when it's like that where it feels like it's too... It doesn't make a lot of sense. We'll try one more cast after this, and then we'll end the episode here. We at least did get the cutthroat after uh, changing out the setup from last time, but... Yeah, it's frustrating to have this, like, what you're trying to counter.
And I can't imagine every kokanee we're seeing is a gold one, so... I think I will have to start doing more preparation when it comes to some of the angler episodes. Write down what the species are, the missions request. Check the hook size chart to see what we need for them. And then check the handbook for the lure type to use. Because this sure as heck ain't working. <laughs> Try one more cast just for the heck of it. And then end the episode with it. Ah, well, there's not really much else I can do here. I'll have to do some research and see. Like, even that rainbows, or the couple of rainbow we've seen, just do not care. Ah, <sighs> darn. It sucks, but, I mean, it is what it is sometimes. And you right there. I don't know if you're a gold rank, a silver, or what, but you're definitely taunting us. We're going to end the angler for right here, or the angler right here for today, though. Thank you all very much for joining me on this episode of the series. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give a like. And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to leave in the comments right down below. And until I see you all next video episode, anglers and survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy angling.